Dr. Yu, if you're back there, please. Come to the table. His energy is unbelievable, by the way. I know. I've watched You are right here, sir. Oh, look at him. Okay. Have you? We oh, met earlier. Pleasure having you on. So, Dr. Yu, if you don't mind, I have your business card here, okay? If you can take a moment. Here it tells me, uh, Wei Ping Yu, PhD, physicist, supercraft subsystem manager, spacecraft fluids, and structures branch. If you don't mind taking a moment and introducing your background, your experience, what you've worked on. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me on. And it's great. <laughs> Terrence wants to fix the. He's a perfectionist. He is, eight yes. guys that are, I love Ty being right. There. Yes, uh, my name is uh, Wei Ping Yu. Uh, I'm currently uh, was employed by federal government, uh, NASA. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm the uh, uh, physics uh, based on the training. I have a PhD in engineering physics, and I have did a lot of fundamental research. And uh, so when I'm the founder of called the Yuan Theory, of everything, try to, try to bring the bridges between relativity and the quantum mechanics, and try to find out the unified unified theory of everything, just like a um, linchpin theory, right? <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, uh, have so you guys ever met before? No, this is the first, first time. time. First this time. is very important for the audience to know. You guys have never met. Never met. And you're currently working for NASA. You're. That, that's correct. Okay. I'm currently working for NASA. But let me make a disclaimer, if you can. So all the views and the opinions expressed here represent purely on my own. It uh, does not uh, reflect any, uh, any of those of my employer, NASA. Fantastic. And I, I appreciate you saying that. So um, you know Eric Weinstein. Have you, guys, yes. have you guys spoken before? Have you guys met yes, before? Yes, Eric, Eric Weinstein called me. Uh, so we were talking about it on the phone for for about 15 20 minutes while i was uh, traveling in california okay and did you have a chance to watch the exchange with you know terrence and eric weinstein on the joe rogan podcast yes uh briefly okay uh, it's a very in interesting exchange yes okay so you we have a uh a, a document here i think it's even a maybe a, a pr oh. uh this is this is that was sent by you right to us. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, it, what was your impression from you hearing the exchange between Eric and what Terence was discussing? Was there anything where you said there's some credibility to what Terence is saying here? I don't know if I agree with them. You know, because you would be to the marketplace. You're part of the establishment scientists. You know, you're you've gone through the school and you've gone a different route than he has. What was your impression of the exchange between the two? Um, I I know one of the focuses is on the statement. That, you know, uh, tires are made by one times one equals two. Yes. And I believe a lot of focus on this statement. Uh, in my view, uh, I be, I, you know, of course, on my uh, conventional view, I, I would disagree uh, with, with, the, uh, with uh, your statement. However, I notice, uh, you know, the definition of one time multiply one is a different between traditional class then uh, in, in Ter Terence is talking. He's bring another dimension, <laughs> okay? Bring another dimension, three-dimensional or some kind of things into this one. So I believe the difference is probably the definition and the model in, in the, our own mind, the difference. I do not believe fundamentally uh, some, some kind of difference if we have a more time to discuss the detail, but not on the setting. I yeah, think. no, and what I'm doing with, I'm contrasting the linear projection and attempt to multiply linearly, just repeating, in comparison to multiplying volumetrically. So you're right in, in adding dimensions, and these necessary dimensions are dimensions that you exist in. Nothing exists in a two-dimensional space. Even a three dimension, like you talk about one dimension, two dimensions, those things are not, you cannot measure them until it has height, width, and depth. So it all becomes basically imaginary as far as the real world goes until it has at least the three dimensions of height, width, and depth. And then it needs your fourth 
perspective in order to be able to measure it. So when they're talking about one and two dimensional things, I'm just looking at, okay, another imaginary thing because it has to be in motion. It has to have width. It has to have depth in order for us to be able to consider it. But they consider two dimensional space or our mathematics is all based on reductionary um, attempts to reduce things, living things down to dead things. Doctor, you yes. you read the white paper. You read all the papers here that he sent, right? We sent you yesterday. Uh, I don't know. If you to read no, I don't. I hope you throw them into the AI because <laughs> no. I'm like, this is a lot of stuff. Did you have a chance to look through some of it? Yes. Okay. What's your impression of what uh, Terence is saying here, and how much credibility is there behind it? Oh, okay. Um, so I would say I'm not talking about the credibility. I do not believe when the credibility based on the education and how many degrees. Uh, how many years, even years of working in the field, I believe this intelligence could come out instant. Like Terence <laughs> mentioned from the gift of a divine, is that right? Yeah. Something, and instantly. Like me working in physics field for decades, I just got to rec rec recognize there's something fundamental wrong, which something happened you know, in Ter Terence's interview, he mentioned about uh, something fun fundamental wrong with current physics, which I actually agree with. What's that? The f okay, um, let me first talk about uh, the first thing. Uh, the first thing, talking about uh, the fundamental wrong, this is a, this is a secret to uh, current physical community. It is something we got it wrong by we made the electron model wrong. This is a f electron is a elementary particles. In, in physics, it's found that elementary particle cannot be subdivided, do not have a, a, a de another a, a detailed structure or something. And uh, we get, if we get this wrong, and what happens next? So if we get the electron wrong, I will explain why we get it wrong, if yeah. you have the time. Yeah, I can help with that too. And then if we get the electron what wrong, we get the, it's called the planetary uh, 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 atomic model. You know the model with similar model? It's a planetary with uh, orbiting free electrons. You get this model wrong. So what I find is uh, there is no free orbiting electrons around the nucleus at the nearly speed of light forever, constantly. That's completely wrong. So what's the implication of this one? So first, we got the electron wrong. And then we got the, the model wrong. Atomic model. What happens if this atomic model have no orbiting, orbiting electrons, no free, called it was a principal orbit? Entire quantum mechanics built on this model is wrong. were completely out of water. Because their foundation on the electron, their view of the electron, they saw it as a particle, as an individual thing when it's an entire cloud. It's an energy, it's a wave of energy. That's what the electron is. It's the discharge coming from, from um, accumulated electrical potential. The discharged electricity, the devitalized electricity, is what we're calling this electron or this, this magnetism. And they're seeing it as a particle when it's just a waveform. It's a pressure condition. It's a resonant, resonant thing that can be manipulated by other frequencies that you don't need actual force, but you can create the conditions to change and affect a waveform. What are you going to sh show something? You brought some props? I'm going to expand my statement and say why we get the electron wrong and why it's so significant. Okay. So from, uh, I believe, from the 1780-85, the French physicist uh, Coulomb, from, from, uh, you know, uh, Proposed the Coulomb's law. It says there are two types of charges. One is negative, one is positive. Mm -hmm. And the like charge repel, unlike charge attract. This is a fundamental law. It's a great discovery. However, it's wrong. The mistake, <laughs> the mistake is he described the two charges are, uh, carried by two separate particles. Instead of having everything being both positive, having both attractive and, and, and detractive things, it's a, it's, a, it's a dipole. It's not a monopole. And the way they're seeing it, how can something, this is something that always got me. 
how can you can say something is charged, positively charged, how can it be negatively charged? How can you negatively charge something? A negative charge is a discharge, means that it's coming out of it in comparison to attracting into it. So their entire terms of a negatively charged particle is wrong. It's a discharging particle. Can let me strengthen yes. your idea. Yes, I'm sorry. This is a brilliant you know, a discovery and the, the, the root cause of our physics. So now people would say, how do you know electron? How can we get the electron wrong? Entire modern uh, technology is built on electrons, right? So that's why all the inter interpretations are, are, are needed to be re rewritten. Uh, so let's uh, ass assuming electron is negative charged and the proton is a positive charge. Now, what happens if we split electron into two halves? Hypothetically split, geometrically split. What do we get? Two negative charged particles? <laughs> two negative charged particles that come together and make Can a positive. Can we <laughs> put the two negative charged particles together? No. Negative okay. things are always going to push each other away. The they're, always going to push, they're always going to push each they're other away. They violate Coulomb's law. So it cannot exist in this universe or if there's other universe. It cannot. Ever. And think about Kirchhoff's law regarding the black body. Now, this is where Planck, if you could look up Kirchhoff, um, this is where the Planck model came from. Um, Max Planck was working off of his model, and part of the radiation from, from Kirchhoff's law was that a black body, it, it, it's always going to radiate into these individual cavities, and these cavities are not going to be dependent on the, the temperature of the walls. They're going to be dependent upon the temperature of what came in there. That was all wrong. Kirchhoff's law, entire law is wrong, and that's what Planck was based off of. But you look at the Planck model and think about, it, it talks about if you want to do a Planck charge and all of these things, you have to use, um, you have to use gravity. Gravity is included in there, and the speed of light is included in there. But gravity at the Planck charge, at the Planck point, is not supposed to be in effect. That's, it's not supposed to, when you get down to the quantum area, gravity is not something that's able to affect those small areas. So why is gravity part of Pl Planck's constant or, or um, the speed of light, which we know changes constantly depending upon the medium that it's going in there. So having the speed of light as a constant, having gravity as a constant in Planck's charge lets you know that this is the Planck's charge, that, that Planck's entire Planck number is false because they've changed the speed of light. To, now they've attached it to another thing in order, instead of so that the speed of light doesn't fluctuate, they've attached it to the measurement itself. So it's always going to be the measurement. That's wrong. That's fudgery. Rupert Sheldrake talked about that, in, about morphisms, um, with the speed of light being, being fudged and changed. So all of their principles are seemingly fudged. Who has questioned this over the years? Like, what... what what scientists? Dirac, are... Feynman, all of them questioned it. That's why they were like, all of this new renormalization makes this stuff bad. Hi, everyone. My name is Terrence Howard. I'm an actor, um, but in the field of science also. So if you would like to connect with me, you can connect with me on Minect. Um, the QR code is down below. And let's have a great conversation. If you enjoy this video, you want to watch more videos like this, click here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click here.